Today I'm talking about what it means to be blessed. You're blessed, right? Yes. Let me hear you say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Like you mean it, I'm blessed. Yes. When you're blessed, there's no reason to stress out about anything, is there? Because we're blessed. And this scripture is called the Beatitudes, and it talks about the blessings. And every verse begins with the word blessed. Every day you should begin with the word, I'm blessed. When you wake up in the morning, I'm blessed. Isn't that a blessing? To just wake up, to have one more day, I'm blessed. And when Jesus taught this, this was the Sermon on the Mountain. And when Jesus spoke, he was not speaking to church people or to a religious group. He was speaking to the multitude, those that came out to hear an encouraging word. And when people come to church, they want to be encouraged, inspired. What is God saying? And right now, I want to let you know God is saying you're blessed. Amen. So let's pick up that first verse. The first verse it says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is what? The kingdom of heaven, the poor in spirit, blessed. Blessed means favored to receive. When you're blessed, you're favored to receive. That means that the favor of God is on you, that you are rightly favored by God. So that means you hold your place as the favor of God is resting upon you. Stay put where you are. The tendency is to become weary in well-doing. You can get tired of being good. Showing up every Sunday. And the Sunday that you miss, the favor shows up. Isn't that how it can be? <laughs> You come, I'm just not going to make it next week. And guess what? The favor was here. There was a little boy who, who was sick. He stayed home. And he stayed home on Palm Sunday. And they came home. His, his parents came home with palm branches. And they say, he says, what are the palm branches for? He says, well, when Jesus came by, everybody waved palm branches. And he says, the one Sunday I miss, Jesus shows up. <laughs> So you don't want to miss the favor of God because you stepped out. The favor will follow you. Blessed are the poor in spirit. When I grew up, we thought that meant poor, that God followed poverty, and the way to blessing is through poverty. But that's not what the word says, is it? Blessed are the poor in spirit. You notice that that's a lowercase spirit. There's a lowercase spirit, and there's an uppercase the lowercase is the human spirit. The uppercase is what? The Holy Spirit. So blessed are the poor in spirit. Now the human spirit that we have, we're born. Our nature is to have the human spirit. And that human spirit is the desire to do our duty. The human spirit is what we want. We exalt ourselves through the human spirit. But the Holy Spirit opposes your human spirit. So whatever the human spirit wants, the opposing force is the Holy Spirit. You cannot satisfy both. You're either satisfying and serving the human spirit or you're serving the Holy Spirit. Because the human spirit wants you to do what you want to do. Do your will. But the Holy Spirit wants you to do what? God's will. Right? You can't have both. You either satisfying yourself, serving the flesh, or you're serving God. I heard a pastor say once that whenever you try to make a blessing, you miss a blessing. Whenever you try to make a blessing for yourself, you miss a blessing. Because the blessing that you made is much less than the blessing that you missed. When you try to make a blessing, you're trying to bless yourself. But when you're trying to be a blessing, God blesses you. And you can't beat God's blessing. Is that right? No matter how much you try, if you're trying to make a blessing, you're centering on self. But if you're trying to be a blessing, you're centering on someone else, allowing them to see God through you. And as you're doing that, God's blessing and favor follows you because you're poor in spirit. Your spirit is poor because you're allowing the Holy Spirit to have control. One who is rich in spirit is powerful and proud, and they don't believe they need anything. 
You can become so exalted that you can edge God out. You can think that you don't even need God. Things are going so well that you can think you can do it without him. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. One who mourns shows a deep sense of sorrow or compassion or regret for something or someone. When you mourn, something may have happened in your life that causes you to mourn. That's a deep sense of sorrow or regret for something that you've done. But then you can mourn with others, having compassion for them. There was one little boy went to his grandfather who was sitting there. He says, Grandpa, are you crying because you miss Grandma? He says, yes. And the little boy climbs up in his grandfather's lap. He says, I want to cry with you because I miss her too. That's compassion. The Bible says, mourn with those who mourn. Laugh with those who laugh. Cry with those who cry. Paul says, I was with the people that I was with. I was one with them. To the poor, I became poor. To the rich, I became rich. To the Jew, I became Jew. He was all things to all people that by some means I might save them. You have to have compassion and be one with the people that you're with. You'll find that sometimes when you're going through suffering, some people will leave you alone. Well, I didn't want to bother you. You know, I know you lost your loved ones. I know you're going through some stuff. I just didn't want to bother you. They really sometimes need someone to just show up and let them know that you, just you care. Isn't that right? Sometimes just being there. And there's not so much that you can say sometimes. When grief is fresh, your words should be few. We always want to say something and think that we, we're so philosophical, that we're going to make everything all right by what we say. Just being there, and maybe you cry with them sometimes, but just hold them, but letting them know that you care. Blessed are those who mourn. And the Bible says, for you shall be comforted. Sometimes while you're working and blessing somebody else, you find comfort to yourself. You will leave from, from the source of helping somebody and you will leave lifted up and you can feel God resting upon you because you have been a blessing. You've been with someone who needed the comfort, who needed the compassion, who needed the touch. And through that, you receive the blessing. The next beatitude is blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. The meek, the quiet, the gentle, the submissive. Meek does not mean weak. Right? The quiet. You know, sometimes it's what you didn't say that made the greatest impact, isn't it? Anybody can give a person a piece of their mind, but can you give them a piece of your heart? Meekness is knowing when to be quiet, knowing when to submit. You know, you don't, that's not mean you give a license to be a doormat. It's just knowing when to allow humility to come about and that you submit yourself. There's a time when there's a strength in being submissive. There's a strength in being humble and letting someone else have the last word. I notice when you text people, the challenge is who can have the last word, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Be meek. Jesus was meek, but he was not weak. He was not weak. It takes meekness to be able to sacrifice yourself and give the benefit to somebody else. It's not weakness to submit yourself to somebody, and the Bible says to bear with the weaknesses and infirmities of somebody else. If someone's in a weak position, they need your strength. And sometimes your strength is shown while you submit yourself to someone else who needs strength, giving them your strength. But it's hard for us to do that. When you've stepped out of favor with God, you find out that favor is not fair. When you step out away from God, you find out that the favor that was meant to be in yours shows up in somebody else's life. That happens. You were in a position of favor, but when you moved out of favor, for whatever reason, the favor shows up in somebody else. And people can resent, you may resent the person that has your blessing, because you know it was meant for you. 
You know that some things were meant for you, but you meant to endure the hardship, endure the struggle to stay where you meant to be. Because as you're going to receive the blessing, you have to go through the suffering. For everyone that's going to get to a promised land, there's going to be a wilderness that you're going to go through. It's not always going to be well. Those who's reading the Bible in one year, we're going through Exodus, right? And you'll notice that when they went through the wilderness, that rather than join closer to God, they begin to grumble and complain. That should teach us a lesson. When you're going through a hardship and a struggle, just be still and know that God is God. The tendency is to want to complain about what you don't have. God knows that, doesn't he? He knows exactly where you are. But God sometimes wanted to know how are you going to respond? What is your response in your time of need? Do you complain about God? Do you give up on God? Do you give out? Or do you give in to God? You know, your confession can be, God, I know that you have a plan. I'm in a place, God, and I need you, but I know that you have a plan. And I'm staying with you, God. I'm asking you to strengthen me, give me faith, give me courage that I can fight this battle. And God, ultimately, this will be to your glory. Because your word said that all things work together for good. And I believe in my spirit, God, that this is working. It may not feel right, but it's working. And when you have that kind of attitude, when you're going through a storm, God grabs you and God takes you through that. The option is to go and, oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. Oh, I don't want to deal with this. Oh, do something about it, God. Oh, take care of this. And God knows where you are. You ever had a child, of course, when you're, you're a child, and maybe you've done this, you're frantic and you run to your parents. Mama, did you make it? Did you this happen? Hey, I'm only happy. Did you make it? And you say, Mom, why don't you just be quiet? He's just telling you, calm down. You see, your concern is your concern. Their concern is you. See, your concern, your issue is your issue. God's issue is you. That's what he's concerned about. You. And if you would just recognize that God's got you, he'll find out that he can take care of all of those issues right there. Position yourself where you need to be with God. And know that God's favor rests upon you and God, he says, cleanses you. He begins to cleanse you from all kinds of issues in your life. Think back some years ago when your life was all messed up. <laughs> you remember a long time ago? When you were deep down in it? Had to look down to look up? Oh, Jesus. Oh, we forget about those struggles. But God has brought us through that. You see that God is faithful, isn't he? But when you're going through it, it didn't seem like there was any way you're going to get through this. Oh, God, if you could just get me through this. And God brought you through it, didn't he? He brought you through it. From that, we should become so faithful and so confident that when we get to the same situation again, we should look back and see where God has brought you from and know that his favor didn't stop right there. His favor is still on you. Now you should walk through this with confidence and say, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil because I know that he is with me. You've got to know. You didn't know back then. You didn't know he was with you, but when he showed up, it gave you the confidence that wherever you go, the goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. And no matter where you go, you got to stop and say, no, I'm not worried about this because I know that my Redeemer lives. I know my Redeemer lives. As Job said, when he was, cur was going through this curse upon his life, God allowed Satan to have access to Job so that he can teach us. If we didn't have Job to look back upon, we would struggle sometime. Can you imagine going through your struggle and then Job showing up in your life? <laughs> Who are you? I'm Job. <clears throat> yes? Shut up. <laughs> Is that right? That's what you can tell yourself sometime. When you've gone through it with God and God has brought you through, 
and you get to the situation again, look in the mirror and say, stop whining. God has not forgotten about you. God did not bring you this far to leave you. He said, I will never what? Leave you and I will never forsake you. Wherever you go, God's glory is with you. God's majesty is with you. And he will lead you through no matter what storm. So you can get up every morning and say, I'm blessed. Might be broke, but I'm blessed. Huh? Might be sick, but I'm blessed. And what you're doing is you're proclaiming what is. You're not lifting up the sickness. You're not lifting up the issue. You're lifting up God. Yes. See, you have the option of still lifting the name of Jesus. Nobody stops you from saying Jesus. Nobody limits you from saying Jesus. As you're going through it, just keep lifting up his name. And if you would do what you can do, if you would do all that you can do, God will start doing what you can't do. Your weakness is his strength. When your poverty is his wealth. When you're down, God is up. You got to know that. And sometimes it takes the valley experiences for us to really meet him. We meet him in that fiery furnace. We meet him in the lion's den. We meet him when we face the giants. We meet him when we face the adversity. We meet him on that road to Damascus as Paul did. God will change your destiny, doesn't he? You thought you were going to do one thing. You have your future planned. And God says, yes, but I've got a plan for you. I've got a hope for you. I've got a future for you. And God's plan is good. And you know, his plan is greater than our plan. Did you know that? He says, your thoughts are not his thoughts. Your ways are not his ways. God has exceeding and abundantly beyond what you could ever ask, think, or imagine. So why are we still trying to do it ourselves? Why are we still thinking that we're in control? God knows better than we do, don't we? Doesn't he? He knows better. The next beatitude. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Hunger and thirst for righteousness. Those in health care know that cravings that your body has is for good things. Your craving is not for McDonald's or that big gulp or all the junk that you have that you think you need. When I get hungry, I'm going to drive through. Your craving is not for those things. Your craving is always for the good things. But you interpret your craving to satisfy your need. And that's where we mess up. What we crave and what we think we need are two different things. We crave the relationship with Jesus Christ, but we think we need a relationship with somebody else. We crave love, respect, and honor, but we think we need it somewhere in a club or somewhere out in the streets. You cannot get what God can give you apart from God. The only way you can get what God has, you've got to go to God. Is that right? You have a craving for one thing, you get something else and find out that's not it. You ever done that? Got a taste for something sweet, right? So you go and eat a whole gallon of ice cream. And find out that's not it. <laughs> oh, I know. I still got some tutti frutti cake that's left over. So you have your tutti frutti cake, and you, 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 know, and you that's not it. And you can't even sleep now, you're so stuffed. You got substance, but no satisfaction. See, when you're not getting the right things, it just it never fulfills you. I found that whenever I have a craving for sweets, it's a protein deficiency. Protein deficiency. You may not know that. And you're giving your body everything except protein. And you're never there. But when I start giving myself giving, eating enough protein, the cravings for, sweet, for sweets goes away. Certain cravings. See, your body can't say, I need protein. It just gives you a craving. And we interpret the craving based upon this nature of ours that wants to please self. Our craving and our nature doesn't say, you know, what do I, what is right for me? No, I don't want the vegetables. I don't want the steamed things. No, I want junk food. Lots of butter. Lots of preservatives. Lots of high fructose corn syrup. <laughs> That's not good. But the Bible says those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. When something is missing, 
It can only be filled by the right things. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, think on those things that are true and good and right and just and of good report. If there's anything praiseworthy, think on those things. From right thoughts come right living. If you want to change a situation in your life, change the thought life. What you think about, you bring about. If you want to change what's coming to you, you've got to stop right here. Renew your mind, right? Be not conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind. Satan's battlefield is our minds. When you hunger and thirst after righteousness, after the right things, after the right way, then you'll be filled or fulfilled. You find there's nothing lacking in your life, no void, no emptiness. You don't even miss all the stuff you used to do. You don't miss all the bad things you used to do. All the, the stuff that used to happen is no longer there because you're hungering, hungering and thirsting after righteousness. And I'm going to close with this one. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessings come to the blessed and favor to those that are favored. When you're in that right place, the favor of God is going to bless you. People are not poor because of a lack of income. Jesus, when he opened the scripture, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Did you hear that? When Jesus I, the, the preached the gospel to the poor, but the poor, don't they need money? Don't they stand on the street corner begging? But I've never heard a poor person say, you got a scripture verse for me? Can somebody pray with me? But deep down, what they need is, is, is the word of God. Blessed are the poor. Blessed are those when people persecute you and curse you and say all manner of evil about you. Spirit says, bless them. Bless your enemies, the Bible says. Bless those who, who would shun you and reject you, who would despise you. Bless them. God, that doesn't make sense. The Bible says he allows the sun to rise on the righteous and unrighteous and the rain to fall on the just and unjust. So if God does not judge who receives good and evil, why should we? Why should we judge someone unworthy of God's best? We're the hands and feet of Jesus. If the world would be blessed, it would be by somebody who knows Jesus. There's somebody in your life right now who needs a blessing. There's somebody who needs a closer relationship with Jesus. And how am I going to be blessed? He says, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are those who mourn. Choose favor over things. Hold your place with God. Hold your place. God has a specific place for everybody in here. The challenge for you is to hold your place. And if you have not a place, find your place. Find your place. Your blessing is going to be in the place where God will have you to be. There's a, a destined place where we're meant to be. And if you're in that place of blessing, that's where the blessing is going to fall. But if you're out trying to find a blessing, out trying to make a blessing, you will miss your blessing. The greatest good that you will find comes from God. Every good and every perfect gift comes from above. It doesn't come from people. No, it comes through people. Every blessing comes from God. I was telling a friend yesterday that the people that he may be trying to push out of his life may be people of God that's trying to bring into your life. Because you may not like those people. Or you may not like the way a person looks or what a person says or what a person does. But God may position somebody like that to bless you. Somebody that has multiple personalities and none of them like you. <laughs> but they're going to bless you. But we've got to get past us, right? 
we block the blessing sometimes. And when it comes, when it ultimately comes to us, is to give God glory. That's what it all comes back to. We are blessed so that we can be a blessing. And when we are a blessing, it brings glory to God. And if we could sum it all up, underline it and highlight it, give God the glory. Thank you, Father. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you for who you are.